Come on, stand on your feet and give God some praise as we welcome our live audience nationally and internationally. So come on, Greenhouse, give our audience that's now viewing this service live, give them a great big applause. Come on, let them know how excited you are. How excited you are. Amen. While you're standing, let's make this confession together because there's power in agreement. Let's make this confession together so you can agree your way out of anything. And you can agree your way into anything. And so we're going to agree our way out of poverty and agree our way into prosperity. So let's stand and make this confession together. This is my Bible. And today, I declare it to be my final absolute authority. Amen. Now turn your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 27. Now we're going to read an extra amount of scriptures on today because we're going to allow the text to just teach. We're going to allow the text to do the teaching. So turn your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 27. We'll be walking from verse 14 all the way to verse 44. But for sake of clarity and time, we begin reading at verse number 14 as we conclude this series of dynamic teaching, Faith Don't Fail Me Now. Faith Don't Fail Me Now will be concluding with part four on today. Let's begin reading with verse number 14, the 27th chapter of Acts. We'll begin reading at verse number 14 and just follow along with me as I read. And if the media ministry would follow along on the screens. Verse 14 says, But not long after there arose in a temperous wind called a Eurachlodon, a major hurricane. Jump down to verse number 18. And when we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast out of our own hands the tackling of the ship and when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared and no small tempest laid on us all hope that we should be saved was then taken away jump down to verse 22 now i exhort you to be of good cheer we just lost hope, yet Paul says. Now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, you must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given you all them who sail with you. Wherefore, sirs, sirs, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe God, it shall be even as it was told to me. Jump down to verse 35. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to the Lord in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were all of good cheer, and they also took some meat or some food. And we were all in the ship, all 276 of us. Jump down to verse 41. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the forefront or the front of the ship struck fast, and they remained unmovable. But the hinder part or the back part was broken with the violence of the waves. Finally, verse 44, as we get ready to take our seats. And the rest, some on boards, some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they all escaped all safe to land. Take your seat and say, faith, faith. don't fail, don't fail. me now. That was a lot of word, but I want to make sure you got the meat of the message. I want to make sure we did justice to the text. I want to make sure you understood that even when you're going through an Eurachlodon, a major hurricane, 
Our brothers and sisters on the East Coast have had to cancel worship services today because of hurricanes. Churches have had to close down and, and schools may close down on tomorrow because of hurricanes on the East Coast. Yet they're declaring faith. Don't fail me now. Let me bring you up to speed. We got to verse number 14. What happened before verse 14 is Paul, you remember Paul, don't you, from last week. Paul had been taken prisoner. Paul was on his way to go before Caesar. Now, again, the only crime Paul had committed was being real about the gospel. Paul had changed his life. Paul had been converted. Paul had been saved. Paul had been filled with the Holy Spirit. And Paul was not going to allow anybody or anything to turn him back to his old ways. If, if you don't get another thing on this morning, you've got to stop letting people take you back where you've been. You gotta stop letting people take. Well, I'm gonna give him a piece of my nerve. No, you should have graduated from that by now. You still shouldn't be cussing folks out just because they cuss you. You still shouldn't be lying on folks just because they lied on you. At some point in time, you gotta cross the line for real. If somebody say for real. At some point, you gotta get saved for real. Stop letting people push you back into your past. So Paul had become a prisoner because he made his mind up to keep the mind of Christ. So the Bible says that Paul was on this boat on the way to Rome to see Caesar, but Paul had heard from God, and Paul told the men it's not the right time to sail out. Paul now was a gospel preacher. A man of God, a prophet in his own time. And Paul told the men, it's not time to sell out. But the men saw dollar signs and profit, and they had cargo on board. They needed to get to the other side because they didn't get their checks until they got to the other side. And many of us, we allow money and dollar signs to keep us in danger because instead of money chasing us, we're chasing money. You will work all day and all night Allow your children to decay before you. We have big houses, big cars, and name brand clothes, but our name don't mean a thing. Paul says that no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what you're going through, Paul says, tell somebody, fear not. If God woke you up this morning, today is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Faith don't fail me now. So you're about to lose your minds wondering, what is he doing now? Brothers start walking closer and closer. The Bible says the next verse, verse 25, Paul says, be of good cheer. Get this, get this, get this, get, get this. Grab hold of somebody real tight. Get this, in the midst of darkness, in the midst of a storm, in the midst of a done, in the midst of people burning out on you, in the midst of all the stuff you're going through, Paul says, in the midst of it, for I believe God. I can shout right there. I believe God. I believe God it shall be. Just as God said, it would be. Can your faith handle going through you rock a done, but still declaring, I believe God. Back in the 80s, that dance crave, pop block. Am I saying it right, pop block? Well, you, 
Diggs and Pop Blockers real quick on center stage. Come on, Tiggs, give me some Pop Blockers. Come on, KB. Give me some Pop Blockers. Come on, Shasta. Give me some Pop Blockers. Watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. Watch. This. Come on. Now, now, now. Watch this. He, he's broke. He's broke for the flare up. Ah, she out there bad. Hoochie mama. Ah, he on that chronic real bad. But she got the favor of the Lord. And because she was in a bad way. And God blessed her. And God brought her out. So she shouted the way she shouted. Because she was on her way to hell. But she don't keep it to herself. One more time. One more time. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Won't nobody be depressed off in here, off in here. Won't nobody be sad off in here, off in here. Won't nobody be broke off in here, off in here. So now, 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 let me prove I have been educated in a systematic approach of the gospel. Because verse 41 says, hmm. And falling into a place where two seas met, brothers and sisters, two seas met. Uh, then they ran the ship ground, meaning the ship crashed. Sometimes God will allow something to happen to your ship. The Bible says the ship crashed and the front started wavering and the back started collapsing and the ship was broken up. But tell your neighbor, it's okay that your ship has broken apart because guess what? We're the same ship and my ship broke too. But the good news is the story don't end right there. Because the Bible says, when the ship was broke up, some of the men were strong enough, get this now, there's always different categories of deliverance. Some of the men were strong enough to swim to the shore. Some of the men still had enough strength to get to the shore. But so don't hate on somebody else because they're strong enough to swim to the shore. Because you spend your energy hating on the swimmer, that's why you're drowning. Yeah. 